your Bibles, turn with me. I'm reading a portion of Scripture found in St. Luke, the 18th chapter, the 2nd through the 7th verses. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God and neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, For I fear not God, and neither regard man. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her constant coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the old unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry unto him day and night, though he bear with them long? I've got a picture of this old unjust judge. You know, here a while back, I got a ticket in Dallas, Texas for speeding. I was going to pray for a woman that was sick, and an officer picked me up. Give me a ticket, and I went down before the judge. And that judge was one of the toughest judges I believe I ever saw. I kind of believe that that judge that I stood before with that speed ticket was about like this judge in the Bible. The Bible said he was an unjust judge and he didn't fear God and he didn't regard man. He was just about as tough as they come. He had no fear for God, he had no fear for man. To be a good judge, if you ever say something so and ever change it, you're not a good judge. To make you a good judge when you say something is a certain way, your decision stands final. That makes you a good judge. Amen. And this judge that I saw sitting on the bench that day when I stood before him with a speed ticket and looked at him, he had a face like a bulldog. I'll never forget, he was bald-headed and he had one hair up on top of that bald head that it looked like he prized more than anything else. And I stood there and he said to me, are you guilty or not guilty? But I said, judge. He said, never mind, guilty or not guilty. But I said, judge, let me explain. He said, guilty or not guilty. Well, I said, I am guilty, but I'm not guilty. He said, guilty or not guilty. Well, I said, I guess I'm guilty of speeding. He said, all right. He said, pay the clerk $20. But I said, but judge. He said, pay the clerk $20. But I, but I said, judge. He said, pay the clerk $20. And I went and paid the clerk $20. The judge wouldn't listen to me. His decision was final. But the Bible said this old unjust judge that didn't fear God and didn't fear man, but the Bible said there was a little old widow woman and she just kept coming. Every time that old judge would look up, here'd come that little old widow woman. And I believe after she come the 87th time, that old judge said, Officer, close the door. Don't let that woman in this court anymore. She's driving me crazy. But the officer said, Judge, I can't close the door. This is an open court and you've got to let her come. And the Bible said that little old widow woman just kept coming. That old judge got where he could hear her footsteps in the hall. I believe he could sit there and know that she was coming down that hall. And he said, now what in the world am I going to do? I'll just have to tell her that I'm going to stay by my decision or I won't be a good judge. And finally the little widow woman come the 137th time and that judge looked down and said, Woman, please leave me alone. Woman, stay out of my court. I made my decision. I'm not going to change it. But the little widow woman said, uh, Judge, I'm just going to keep coming until you do change it. But I'm not going to change it. I don't regard man and I don't fear God. And I'm not going to change my decision. The little, little widow woman said, then I guess I'll just have to keep coming, Judge, because I'm going to keep coming until you change your mind. I imagine when she come the 187th time, I can see that old judge reach up and get the last hair on top of his head. The thing he prized more than anything else, and I can see him pull that hair out and throw it down. And I can hear him say, please, please, can't you keep that woman away from me? She's driving me crazy. But the officer said, Judge, you've got to let her come. It's an open court, and you've got to let her come. And that little widow woman standing there, and that judge said, Woman, what do you want? Tell me what you want. She said, Judge, nothing. I just want you to change your mind. Just, just reverse your decision. He said, Woman, would you leave me alone if I, I did reverse my decision? Would you promise not to come back and bother me anymore? 
He said, I hear you at night. I wake up in the morning and I can see you coming. He said, please. He said, will you promise me not to bother me anymore? And the little widow woman said, yes, judge. If you'll just change your mind. Just reverse your decision and I won't bother you anymore. And the Bible said because that little widow woman just kept coming, that old unjust judge finally reversed his decision and let that little widow woman have her way. Because he said, unless her continual coming wearies me. And the Bible said of an old unjust judge that didn't fear God and didn't fear man would change his mind. How much more will God do for his children that cry to him day and night, though he bear with them long? I read one time in the Bible in another place where a man came at midnight and he knocked on the door and he said, Open the door, open the door. The fellow said, I'm in bed, my children are in bed and I'm not going to open any door. That fellow said, Open the door. Open the door, open the door. Give me some bread. There's some people in travel and they've stopped by my house at midnight and I don't have any bread in the house and I want you to give me some bread. The fellow said, now look, I'm in bed, my children in bed. I'm not going to get out of this bed and go running down through any kitchen on a cold linoleum floor to give you any bread. Now you go home and go to bed. It's midnight. But that fellow didn't shut up. He just kept on knocking. He said, give me bread. I need bread. There's people in travel and they come by my house and I need some bread. Now I'm not just telling you a story. This is in the Bible. Somebody said, well, it's not in the Bible about the linoleum floor. No, but how do you know they didn't have a linoleum? I believe they did. And that man just kept on knocking and he said, I want some bread. And finally the Bible said because of his importunity, that old boy got up and went down the stairs at midnight and got a loaf of bread out of the cupboard and shoved it out the door and said, now please get away from my door and let me and my children get some sleep. Because of his importunity. I looked up the word importunity and it meant persistency. He just kept on pounding. The Bible said, seek and ye shall find. The Bible didn't say, take one look and quit. It said, seek, 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 seek and you'll find. The Bible said, knock. It didn't say, hit the door once and quit. The Bible said, knock, keep on pounding. Brother, if you'll knock, the door will be open. The Bible said, ask and you shall receive. Didn't say, just say one time, oh God, heal me and give up and quit. But it said, ask, ask. Keep on asking, keep on knocking, keep on seeking. For to him that seeks he shall find, to him that knocks it shall be open unto him, and to him that asks shall receive. You have not because you ask not. The Bible said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'd move a mountain. The Bible didn't say if you had faith like a mountain, you'd move a grain of mustard seed, but the Bible said if you had faith like a little grain of mustard seed, you'd move a mountain. I'll never forget when I was in San Antonio in a revival meeting. Night after night I'd prayed for the sick in one of the churches there. One night they brought a poor girl in that had TB in both lungs and a hole in one of her lungs the size of a silver dollar. That girl laid there on that bed and had been on a bed for six long years. She was brought in there by Bailey Funeral Home. They furnished her ambulance service to bring her to the meeting. And I'll never forget, I laid my hands upon that girl and prayed for her and the power of God went through her and she left that bed and shouted and praised God. Instead of riding home on the ambulance bed, she rode home in the front seat with the driver. When she got home, she lived on the third floor and she got out of that ambulance and ran up three flights of stairs, praising God every step she took until she got to where she lived. And everybody had left the church after service was over. Nobody was there but me and the pastor and the pastor's wife and my wife. We was getting ready to turn out the lights to go home when we heard a siren outside. The doors opened and down the aisle came a man pulling a gurney. He set the bed down there and he said, am I too late? And I said, you're never too late. What do you want? He said, I want God to heal my girl. He said, I'm Mr. Bailey of the Bailey Undertaking Parlor and I brought that girl in here with TB tonight. I've hauled her to hospitals and I've took her to different places. And he said, I know what God done for her. Said that girl run up three flights of stairs and said, my daughter's late at home. Been unconscious for three days and I've had her to doctor after doctor. Nobody seems to know what's wrong with her. He said, I don't believe what you believe. But he said, would you pray for her? And I said, I don't care what you believe as long as...